The chest burster is the third stage of the xenomorph life cycle, following the overmorph and face hugger, and is the infant stage of the xenomorph. After the host has been impregnated by the face hugger, the so called embryo it deposits down their throat will settle inside their chest cavity, where it will then begin to develop and grow, leeching off the host organism for nutrients and their genetic material. The use of the word embryo is only used for illustrative purposes, as there is no actual physical embryo. Rather, the infant xenomorph begins its life as a highly mutagenic fluid which is released down the host's throat by the face hugger. This fluid then brings about chemogenetic restructuring of the host cells, essentially building the chest burster from the host's own biological material at a cellular level. After the host awakens from their comatose state, they will feel drained and nauseated, but will not feel much pain or discomfort. However, they will be experiencing memory loss and won't remember what just happened. When the gestation period is finished, and the chest burster developed to the point where it is able to survive and grow independently of the host, usually in 24 hours or less, it will coil up and use its strength to force itself out through the victim's sternum, causing severe trauma, organ rupture and massive blood loss. Death is almost instantaneous, but excruciatingly painful. In appearance, the chest burster resembles a snake or worm, will be up to two feet in length and beige in colour, with a mouth of metallic teeth. Depending on the length of the individual's gestation and development process before emergence, it may or may not have started to grow arms, which if present will be seen in a vestigial form, or as small nubs growing out from the sides. The chest burster is probably the most vulnerable state of the xenomorph's life cycle. They are initially practically defenceless, being so small and yet to develop a protective carapace. If born in a busy area, the chest burster will immediately seek escape to find shelter in a less open area where it will be less exposed, such as inside of air ducts and ventilation shafts, where it will then cocoon itself and rapidly grow into an adult xenomorph. Depending on the body structure of the host organism, the chest burster may be unable to escape on its first try. If this happens, then the host will usually die from the effects of the growing chest burster displacing vital organs and causing internal hemorrhaging. The chest burster will then emerge when it's reached a larger size, being stronger and more developed, emerging as what has been coined as a Bambi burster due to its frail appearance somewhat resembling a baby deer, at least in the case of a runner alien. Due to the developing xenomorph assimilating some of its host's genetic traits during their development in a process dubbed as DNA reflex, chest bursters will vary in appearance depending on the species of the host life form they were born from. For example, xenomorphs born from a bipedal host like a human will be bipedal themselves, but one born from a quadrupedal animal will take on a quadrupedal stance, and a xenomorph with a yautja as a host will feature their mandibles. While the birthing of a chest burster is inherently fatal, it has been proposed that removing a chest burster prematurely is theoretically possible to attempt to save the life of the host. However, further research and testing has shown this to be all but futile. While unlike the face hugger, the chest burster provides no means of life support for the host, so its surgical removal per se poses little immediate danger but the residual damage left behind by the cancerous development process that creates the chest burster means that, even if it were removed safely, the host would soon after begin to develop terminal tumours and other complications causing them to perish in a fairly short period of time afterwards. Still, for many, this would be preferential to the alternative. If surgical removal is going to be attempted, then placing the host into a stasis tube will pause the xenomorph's development. 
So what did you all think of the chestbursters from the Alien films? I for one thought they were pretty scary and not a good way to die. I find the way they burst out of people to be pretty disturbing, especially in the first film. I feel that after that, they didn't quite get it right in any of the other films. They never had that same impact as in the first film. The actors always look more like they just have indigestion or something. I know that in Alien Resurrection, they removed the cloned queen from Ripley and she survived, but their DNA had kind of bled into one another during the, closing, the cloning process, and Ripley 8 was a sort of hybrid with a Xeno, so I think she got their strength and healing abilities and that's how she survived the procedure. And in some non-canon stuff too, they could be removed, like in that AVP game, and I think in, in one of those new comics made by Marvel as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe if you aren't already to help the channel grow, so I can keep bringing you more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.